The weather is finally getting warmer here in Illinois and we are all ready to get outside and enjoy that weather. But if your garage is looking anything like ours, it is not spring ready. <laughs> So today I partnered with Cricut to show you some simple tips and tricks for ways that you can organize your garage so it's one less thing you have to worry about as we head into the warmer weather. So stay tuned. I'm Whitney, this is Whiskey and Wit, and if you are new to my channel and you love DIYs, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss any future content. Huge thank you to Cricut for sponsoring today's video so I can show you how you can make more use out of your Cricut machine. I know I do a ton of decor, but Cricut is also really great for organization and for creating labels. I've recently really gotten into using different materials to label a ton of things. So I'm gonna show you a few different ways that you can label things today and some tips and tricks for organizing your garage. So we've got to get this place first loaded out, cleaned up, and then we will get it all back in here and organized. So let's go. Now, Alex and I have been super busy over these last few months doing some home improvement projects, building some furniture, all the things, and our garage has turned into a dumping ground. One of us will use something, we'll put it away where we think it goes, and vice versa, and that's how we ended up with just literally stuff everywhere. So our first step was to go through and really be meticulous on what we really needed to keep and what we didn't need. We had three different sets of power tools that could easily be donated or given to someone else. We had pieces to old house items that we had gotten rid of after the previous owner. So it was important to just go through everything and just really detox stuff that you don't need. Also keep in mind, if you've got any building materials, those are great to go to a Habitat for Humanity Restore. There are a lot of different things that you can do with your items instead of just throwing them away. Also as we go, I am making sure to sweep and use our shop vac just to make sure that we get up all the nasty leaves and stuff that have blown in over the winter. The first project I knew I wanted to do in this corner was to put up a pegboard. So Alex added some additional two by fours to our studs so that it would be all sturdy and good to go. Then he hooked it to the wall, made sure that it was level. And this is just a really inexpensive piece of pegboard that we got from Menards. I will link more information down below. And I grabbed one of these heavy duty assorted sets. It was under $10 for all of these pieces. And I bought a bunch of other pieces thinking I would need it and they all get to get returned and I get some money back. So I started by just kind of playing around, figuring out where I wanted some of our most common accessories, hand tools, et cetera, to be accessible. These are things that both Alex and I use on a regular basis, and we wanna make sure that they are in a central location and nice and organized. So once I knew where things were gonna go, then cue Cricut. So I used my Cricut Joy for this project because I could easily bring it out into the garage with me and I'm using smart vinyl so I don't have to worry about having a mat. I also grabbed some smart label and transfer tape. The smart label will come in a little later. So I started by measuring the pegboard and learning that there's about an inch standard around each piece. I knew I wanted to have each of my decals be about three quarters of an inch high so that they would fit. So I went through on the app just with my phone. I didn't even have to bring my computer out and I created all of the different text pieces that I was gonna need to label my peg wall. And then I used this long strip of vinyl. That's what the smart vinyl means. And I was able to just cut one continuous strip for all of the different pieces without a mat, which is really awesome. This is a feature exclusive to the Cricut Joy and I've been using my Joy a ton for this reason. Then I trimmed each of my pieces and then went through and weeded them. So if you're new to Cricut, that basically just means you are taking out all of the pieces of vinyl that you don't want. So all of the vinyl on the outside, as well as items inside of different letters like O's, P's, D's, A's, etc. Once everything was weeded, I grabbed some Cricut transfer tape, and this basically just looks like a big piece of tape, but this is gonna help you transfer your decal to where it needs to go. I used my Cricut burnishing tool to push everything down, and then I cut my pieces into the individual decals or stickers. 
Then it was time to figure out where I wanted them on my pegboard and I went ahead and applied them. Now I'm using permanent vinyl here because I think that will stand up better to any of the elements, especially because our garage is not insulated or drywalled. So I just pulled off tools one by one and I put the sticker somewhere where it would not be really overpowering that there were words everywhere and a lot of them it's behind the items but then you know right where something goes back when you take it off of the pegboard like i said that was one of the biggest things that we had trouble with at our house where i would use a stud finder i would put it where i thought it needed to go then alex would do the same and it would be in a different spot and so now if i take a handful of stuff i can put it right back where it goes you know right where it is so hopefully this means there's no excuse for either of us to not put our stuff away One amazing area that people don't think about for storage in their garage is up above. So for us, we have open rafters. So we just took some plywood and put our seasonal items up there like lights and porch decor. But if you don't have something like this, you could absolutely purchase something that you can hook to your ceiling if your garage is drywalled. Another thing not to look over the power of are singular hooks or nails. So because our studs are exposed, these nails were out and these were here from the previous owner. So we use it to hang up a lot of different things, get it up off the floor and keep things organized. Another thing to think about when you're organizing garages is to consolidate. So here I am creating a grid so that I can create labels to consolidate all of these different containers that we have of screws and nails. So I went through and made that little drawing just so I knew what items were in each container. That was going to help me once I got everything sorted so then that way I knew what to put on to the labels. So I grabbed this Smart Label Vinyl and this is my first time using it and I am obsessed with it. This stuff is super cool and I'm going to show you how I made some great labels. So because I was doing a lot of typing with different types of screws and nails, I just decided to use my desktop. You could absolutely make it on your phone, but for me I type faster on my laptop. So I started by creating rectangle shapes the size of what I wanted my stickers and labels to be. I made four rectangles for the four large drawers, and then I also made smaller ones for the individual screw and nail drawers. So really when you go through this, it's as simple as you're typing in a Microsoft Word or a Google Docs, you're typing in your text, and then just make it fit within your rectangle. The biggest thing I would recommend doing here is selecting both your text and your rectangle and selecting center. That way it will make sure that your text is in the center of the rectangle. And then you're also gonna wanna select both the text and the rectangle and click attach in the right hand corner. That is going to tell Cricut that you want your text to be written on top of that sticker. I went through, followed my diagram and made stickers for every little drawer in that container. So it's the same process as the other smart vinyl where it just goes as one continuous strip. But this one, I popped in my Cricut Joy pen that came with the machine. The pen will go through and write everything that you typed into Design Space. And then once that was all written out, then it told me to replace my pen with the little blade and then it went through and cut all of the different rectangles so I could just peel them off as stickers. Then it was as easy as peeling it back like you just bought them at the store, super simple stickers but you were able to customize them and I stuck them on each of the little drawers and this is going to be so amazing when we have a project. You can pull the drawer completely out do whatever you need to do, work at a workbench, whatever, and then put it back. This would be amazing for small craft pieces too, so I think I might go back and do the same thing for my craft room as well. I love using the Cricut this way as well because I would not ever recommend cutting something that small. Personally, the weeding would make me want to pull my hair out. So this is a great way to use your Cricut and create these labels without having to go the vinyl route.
My next area that I wanted to tackle was scrap wood. I've got a lot of different pieces left over from projects that I have plans for, but it was just kind of piled up in the corner. So what I did is I took Alex's fishing poles, made sure they were back in the little fishing pole holder rack, whatever you want to call it that we have here. And then I just took a piece of that scrap wood, used our nail gun and just real quickly attached it. And then I have a little makeshift holder for my scrap wood. On this side wall, we were also lucky that the previous homeowners had this hanging bar for things like brooms and shovels and Alex has the weed whacker on there and some different saws and things. And so that was nice to be able to just get everything back put away where it went. And then I also gave it a really good sweep and shop vac. It had been a long time since we have done that and so it was really nice to see the floor again. Now my last thing that I knew I had to do something with were all of these bins on the shelves. Now we tried to have a process before with these bins, but unfortunately it just didn't work for us. And I think the problem was neither of us knew really what was in each bin. So we didn't know where to find stuff A and B, we didn't know where to put it back when we were done. So to fix that, I went in to Design Space and created some little tags to attach with Jutwine. It's really simple. So I went and created a circle, the width of what I wanted. I ended up using a two inch circle and then I made a smaller circle, selected both of them and hit slice. That's gonna create three different pieces for you and delete the two that you don't want. And that will leave your circle with the hole in the top and that will allow you to hang your tags. Now you can handwrite these, but I really love using the Cricut writing tool now. If you haven't guessed, I am loving using it. And so I went and found a font that I liked. I typed out all the different names that I wanted to put on the different baskets. The key thing here is to make sure you select writing. And then I went through and followed the same process that I did for those other write on labels, selected it, made sure that it was centered and then hit attach in the right hand corner. And then I followed the prompts to insert both my Cricut pen in slot A and then my blade was already in the B slot. I was able to walk away, get something else done while it was writing and cutting. It writes first and then it cuts and this total process took probably about 10 minutes and I had some really fun custom labels to hang on those baskets. So because the cardstock was something I already had on hand, I also grabbed some jute twine and we're using baskets that we already had. I wasn't trying to spend a ton of money to make this look super Pinteresty. I wanted this to function more than anything because like I said, we've got projects going on. We need to be able to find what we need. So I just cut some pieces of jute twine and use that to attach each of the little tags to the baskets. and. Now I'm so excited. I know where all of the plumbing things are. We know where all the caulk is. And the biggest thing is that you create labels that the people who are going to use them understand. So for us, we have this one that's random house stuff, but we both know exactly what is in there and it helps us find things when we need it, which is super helpful. I used these same techniques throughout the garage to make sure things were labeled correctly. I grabbed a couple of these stacking organizers from Menards and labeled those so that I knew where my craft stuff was like sanding blocks and wood filler and glue. And it feels so amazing to have an organized and clean garage now. So here's a reminder, here is what the garage looked like before and here is what it looks like after.
Thank you so much for watching and a huge thank you to Cricut for sponsoring today's video. All the information on all of their products and all of the videos and other things that I mentioned throughout this video will be linked down in the description box. And if you're new and you like what you saw today, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future Whiskey and What content and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye!